my burdens down. Glory, glory.
Glory, hallelujah, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. I'm going to help to sing this song. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. My voice is trying to go away, but I'm, just, I'm praising the Lord anyway. Thank you, Lord. I just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. I love this song. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you.
thank you, Lord. Clap your hands for Pastor Michael. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm mean, glad to see a new year. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm glad. That last one liked to kill me. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. But we thank the Lord for this new year. Thank the Lord for all of you being in the house of the Lord on tonight. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now we're going to go into a word of prayer. We have a prayer request here. Mother Hickman and Sister Jones just had a nervous breakdown. She's in the hospital. Sister Mary Jones. Many of you remember Sister Jones. Let's pray for her with all the other needs. Father, we bow our heads, bow our hearts to you on the night. We come to you with so much gratitude for the grace that you've given us. Lord, to still be holding on when others is let go, when many have cast away their confidence, when many have lost faith in God. You said all men have not faith. But, Lord, you've still given us a measure of faith. We ask you to help our unbelief on the night. God, we believe you, but help our unbelief. Help us where we're struggling. God, in our prayer, and struggling and believing and holding on and serving you with all our strength. Lord, we need your strength. Lord, our strength is insufficient. We're not sufficient of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of you. And we lean on you, Lord, for this new year. Lord, Jeremiah said you give us new mercies in the new morning. Lord, we ask you for new grace this year. That you give us more grace to serve you acceptably in reverence, in godly fear. For we read in the Bible that you are consuming fire. Lord, I want you to consume me. I want you to swallow me up, Lord, as I present myself to you as all these here. Lord, that you would consume our sacrifice as we lay our lives on the altar. God, that you would cause the Holy Ghost fire to baptize us and burn out all flesh and all sin, sinning, desire for sin. Give us a new spirit of prayer this year. Oh, put us under a new burden, Lord. Many have lost the spirit and the mind to pray. But I'm asking you for a new mind to pray, Lord, for every soul here tonight. Lord, that you will let a real spirit of prayer get a hold of us as we draw nigh to you. Lord, you say you would draw nigh to us, Lord, as we get in our prayer times in the wee hours of the morning, some in the evening, some at night. Lord, that you would meet us in our time and season of prayer. Oh, never let us, Lord, lose our faith. Never let us be weary in well-doing. You say in due season we would reap and not, Lord, if we faint not. Lord, you say men ought always pray and not faint. Oh, Lord, we're looking to you. Lord, we know that this spirit of prayer doesn't come from ourselves, but that it comes from you on tonight. We ask you to help us to handle every situation with prayer. We pray for Sister Jones on the night that you have mercy on her mind and her nerves and her spirit. God, I know the enemy would love nothing more than to tear down all your people. God, I don't know, Lord, the things that you may have told her to do that maybe she didn't do, but I know that, that all this attack is from the devil. God, I know the devil is the one that come to steal, kill, and destroy, but you come that we might have life. Lord, and we send your word of life to that hospital. Lord, that you would give her your peace on the night that you would sell her nerves, that you would give peace to her mind on the night and her spirit. God, in all the hours here, Lord, that are battling in the bodies, in the mind, in the marriages, in their families, in their finances, oh God, oh Lord, God, that you would bring a deliverance in this new year, that you would bring, God, that you would pull down every stronghold while we're praying and we're believing you on tonight. We believe you. Lord, to break every yoke, Lord, on this house of God, on these saints of God. Lord, that you would move, Lord, that you give us well bodies, well spirits. Oh, we ask you, Lord, to continue in the furtherance of this service. We thank you for Sister Tasha, Lord, in the front part of the service, your spirit. We ask you to continue with us in the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord as you're seated tonight. Thank God. Amen. I appreciate the Lord for all of us making it here on the night. Praise the Lord. This is the way to start the year off right, praying and serving the Lord. Amen. 
Amen. And seeking God. And I know we didn't have a, a midnight prayer. Amen. But I believe we got plenty of prayer going on around here. Amen. If we'll avail ourselves of it. I know that uh, some was looking forward to some saints. Not saints, but some of the people in St. Louis was asking me about midnight prayer. And we just didn't feel it. You know. Uh, but I believe that the Lord wants us paying special attention to prayer all year long. Amen. I, I thank God for the new year, but, you know, as far as the Lord is concerned, you know, it does our conscience, you know, but as far as the Lord is concerned, today ain't no different than yesterday. Amen. Today ain't no different than yesterday. You get saved on New Year's Eve, you can get saved on New Year's Day, you can get saved in, in the month of June. You can repent and get things right and get on fire for God any time of the year. Amen. But I know a lot of uh, people, New Year's Eve is a, you know, a fresh start and ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, the Bible says one man esteems one day above another and another esteems every day alike. Ain't that what the scriptures said? tell y'all? Amen. Anybody read the Bible out there? Praise the Lord. So we don't uh, condemn nobody for New Year's Day or no other day, but I believe that God wants us paying more diligence to our spiritual walk. Amen. I believe that. I thank God for getting out. I, I tell you, I don't believe no spell, but I thank God for getting out of 2013. Praise the Lord. I felt like that about killed me last year. Amen. That was a rough year. Amen. Like Sister Tasha said, I'm believing the Lord for better things this year. Amen. How many believe in God for better this year? Praise the Lord. I may like a little bit more money this year. See, that's something you get everybody to agree on. I may like more prayer this year. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I may like to be closer to Jesus this year. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. I want to draw nigh to God. He said he would draw nigh to us. He told us that men are always to pray and not to faint. Amen. And people are faint right now. And I had a disturbing dream today. I was going to uh, tell the saints Sunday morning I may not preach this message still. But then on Monday I got a confirmation. Somebody was telling me uh, how the Lord moved for them. I talked to them and asked them to do some things. And they did it. And the Lord just moved for them. And then I had this uh, dream today just disturbed me. And I feel like the Lord uh, still wanted me to minister this even though I talked about it briefly on Sunday morning. You know, exhorting that Brother Akon always thank me. He said, on Sunday morning, we get two messages. Praise the Lord. Because sometime up there, I'm just so excited. You know, I preach a little bit, and then I preach a little bit. Praise the Lord Jesus. But I tell you, we uh, exhorted the saints a little bit on this, a little bit on Sunday morning. But today, we want to... Uh, talk to you from the word and I've always always since I was a kid found my answer in the word of God and you know people uh, call me and I don't mind talking to people my wife will tell you I don't mind talking to people ten times but I'm going to give you the same answer ten times amen I don't have no other answer you know People get tired, you know, say we sound like a broken record, telling folks to pray and seek God, but ain't no other answer. Ain't no other answer. Ain't no magic wand in the kingdom of God. Your answer is in seeking the Lord. You know, and if we can get people to realize that, amen, that we ought, Mother Hickman, always to pray. Amen. When you don't feel like praying, Sister Hera, good to see Sister Hera on out. Praise the Lord. The devil tried to kill you last year too, didn't he? But you're still here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. That you never get weary in praying. And pray when you don't feel like praying. Amen. Somebody besides Brother Mill say amen. Because you ain't going to always feel like praying. You ain't going to always. You know, I like to say that I always got a fire burning to pray and seek God, but I don't always have a fire burning. Amen. I don't always feel that prayer will turn it. Amen. But God has given me a mind to know that I ought to. That's what Jesus said. 
that word ought to means you have obligation. Anybody read that in Luke 18? He said men ought, just like you ought to pay your bills, shouldn't you? Didn't say you had to, but you ought to. You ought to take a bath every day. Nobody said you have to. They won't lock you up. Maybe they should, but they won't. But you ought to take a bath every day. Amen. You ought to brush your teeth. Amen. <laughs> I saw this sign once said, be true to your teeth or they'll be false to you. <laughs> brush your teeth because you know that you want to keep them in your head, don't you? You know, and that's the way prayer works. It's like toothbrushing. You don't, you know, you go one day without brushing your teeth, you probably don't notice a big difference. You know, I try to brush mine twice a day, you know, because when I finally made it to the dentist about eight years ago, she examined me. The first thing she asked me when she finished examining, she said, how badly do you want to keep your teeth? And I knew it wasn't good when she asked me, how bad do I want to keep them? <laughs> and I figured I wanted to keep them, you know, being 38 years old, didn't want to be toothless. You know, so I brush them twice a day and use all that stuff and the floss and try to keep them in my head, you know. But you got to be diligent about brushing your teeth, don't you? You know, they're they not going to fall out the first time you don't brush them. But get a habit of not brushing them, and pretty soon, you know, they start leaving on you, packing up and going. And sometimes when you brush them, they still get a mind to go, you know. And that's the way prayer is. You, first time you don't pray, you may not, you know, but it builds up for good and for bad. Some people don't don't have a spirit of prayer and think, man, why well, I prayed one time and then nothing happened. Well, you keep praying. You know, you keep praying and seeking God, you know, and things get better, you know, and they taught us that when we was uh, doing uh, personal hygiene when I first started working for the state in 86, you know, they would give us, I don't know how they teach people, they did, but they taught us how to take care of people. And they say, no matter how bad their teeth are bleeding, just keep brushing them because that's the only way they're going to get better. And I took that as a lesson for myself because my gums would bleed. But if you keep brushing them right, and they get stronger and healthier, you know, and that's the way prayer is. You know, you don't feel the effects maybe the first time you pray, but keep on praying and Jude said you build up yourself. Ain't that what he said? He said you would build up in prayer. And you ain't going to always feel prayer. But keep praying anyhow. Because it has a powerful effect. Ain't that what James said? Prayer has a powerful effect. Even when you don't feel like it's working for you. Prayer is working for you. Even when you feel like you ain't getting nowhere with God. God is listening. God is hearing. The Bible said that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Y'all read that in y'all Bible. He's a rewarder. Amen. If we don't cast away our confidence, if we don't get weary in well-doing, told us two or three times in the word, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we'll reap if we faint not. And people are fainting right now. People are giving up. But I want to encourage you, let's keep praying. Let's keep seeking God. Amen. This is open door house of prayer. This ain't open door house of singing and shout. It's a house of prayer. And God said, my house shall be called of all nations, a house of prayer. Ain't that what he said? Where men and women can come in, and if you can't pray nowhere else, you should be able to pray in the house of God. Amen. You shouldn't go to any house of God. There's so much talking that you can't get a prayer through. Every time you go to a house of God, you're supposed to feel encouraged that, God, I couldn't pray at home, but now that I'm here in the midst of these people, I feel a spirit where I can get a hold of God now. Amen. This is what we need to encourage when we come in the house of God that everybody feel like, even though I had a hard week, I had a hard day, I couldn't get a hold of God. Oh, hallelujah. But when I come into David said, when I remember the house of God, he said, my steps had almost slipped. He said, but I thought about the house of God. If you can get to the house of God, there's help in the house of God. There's strength in the house of God. That's why he said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. When we come together, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name. What did he say? There am I in the midst of them. We're stronger together than we are apart. Amen. Praise the Lord. I need you here. Amen. I need you here in the house of God. Praise the Lord. We need one another. 
Amen. Y'all don't realize it sometimes, but we need one another. Amen. Not our flesh, but that spirit of God in us. Amen. Makes us stronger. Amen. When I went through my great trial and couldn't see God, was hearing thoughts of blasphemy in my head, and didn't know God was real. I knew, had enough sense, bro, Carter, to come to the house of God. I knew if there was any help for me, it was here in the house of God. And when I couldn't see him for myself, I saw him in y'all's faces, and it told me that God was still real. Amen. When the devil was telling me God wasn't real. Oh, you got some trials where the devil will tell you God ain't real. Y'all must not have had them, but I, I've had them. Amen. And when you see him in one another, amen, that lets you know sometimes he's real when you can't see him in yourself. Amen. How many of you ever felt, look, look like God wasn't with you no more? Like God done forsake you. God done changed his word. I mean, he ain't changed his word. He's still the same deliverer as we read in the Bible. He's still the same prayer answering God. Amen. And I want to encourage you. Let's build up ourselves. Amen. On our most holy faith. Let's use this. This new year is a new start for you. Use it to say, God, I'm rededicating myself in prayer. Amen. Not just here at the house of God, but also before you go to work in the morning. I know people have gotten bad habits. I know it. I don't have to ask. I know people have gotten bad habits just jumping up and headed off to work. But you need to have a season of prayer before you head off to work in the morning. And that means you may have to get up an extra hour early, but you need to have that. You don't need to get in this routine where you just jump out and get on the road without praying. Amen. You need to have that where you commune with the Lord Jesus with all the power he had. Mark say he rose up a great while before day and went out into a solitary place and there prayed. Amen. Amen. You need the Lord with you on these roads, on these highways. Praise the Lord. I mean, God will go with you. He'll send his angel before you and prepare the way. Won't he do it? He'll lead you around hurt, harm, and danger. He'll speak to you. Amen. Sometimes, you, you know, God have us delayed on these roads. You get on down there, there's an accident down there. Why? The Lord God was with you. Amen. And prayer helps us. Amen. Prayer helps us. Amen. We ought to avail. This is a privilege. It's not, it's not amen, just a responsibility. It's a privilege to be able to talk to God. It's a privilege for him to incline his ear to listen to somebody like me, somebody like him, listen to somebody like me. That's a privilege. Amen. And every opportunity that you have to talk to him. Amen. Take advantage of it. Because people are running out of grace right now. People are losing their minds to seek God. They ain't losing their mind for church. We was telling them on Sunday morning when Jesus said, strive to enter. He's talking about the straight gate versus the broad way. People think that's the world and the church. No, all of that is the church. Most of your church today is on the broad path. And they don't even know it. Jesus said, because straight is the gate. Ain't that what he said? And narrow is the way because people don't want this self-denying life. People don't want this life where Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him do what? Deny himself and do what? Take up his cross. Amen. The church has forgotten the cross. What did they say to Jesus? If you be the son of God, come down from the cross. That's all the church wants is come down from the cross. But the Lord has told us we got to take up our cross. And we got to, if we're going to follow Jesus, it's a way of suffering and a way of self-denial. Amen. So always have that God that even though I'm tired, amen, I'm going to make time to pray this morning. Before I get up and go about my day, I'm going to make time. The Bible say, honor the Lord. Amen. When you honor him, amen, he, he knows how to watch out for you. He knows how to talk to you and give you what you need for your day. If you'll always remember to take that time, make a sacrifice, go to bed a little earlier. Amen. If you got to, amen, whatever you got to do to have that, don't ever get into a habit of starting your day without talking to the Lord. And some people work night shift. Well, you may have to change things. may have a season of prayer in the evening. You know, people's days are different now. Don't everybody work Monday through Friday, you know, day shift. But ever how your day falls, have a dedicated time of prayer in it. Amen. Have a dedicated season and a time for the Lord. Well, I ruined myself now, but give the Lord a hand clap for Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I tell you, this prayer 
when he first started in the 80s, a man of God told the church to start praying. Back then it was 10 in the morning too in the church. You know, but he said this prayer is what's going to take the churches through. Amen. And even though we ain't having great fall down from the sky revival, God is still good to open door. God is still blessing us. Amen. You come to St. Louis, you're still seeing people. Amen. Want to come into the house of God. Amen. Still got people wanting to join. They got problems, but that's what church is for, for people with problems. Amen. We don't get many senators joining, <laughs> but we get people who want to come in. I mean, God is still good to us. Amen. When you look at how churches are suffering, amen, open doors still blessed. And I know it's because of prayer. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord with me. If you ain't got a rejoicing in your own soul, praise the Lord with me. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for Jesus. But let's go into the word on tonight. Appreciate my wife pressing her way out. The devil's been trying to kill her. She said, you get sick and you over it in two days, a day or two. And she's been battling ever since Saturday morning. Amen. Get better, get worse, get better, get worse. But she pressed her way out tonight. I appreciate that. Amen. I appreciate my wife. I was over here praying this afternoon. And I thank God that, you know, God blessed me with two good wives. Amen. Some of y'all can't hardly get one. <laughs> I said, well, both my wives have loved God more than they love me. I wouldn't marry a woman that didn't love God more than she loved me. You shouldn't marry a man that don't love God more than he loved you. Somebody said, why is that? Because when they get mad at you, they still be scared of God. A woman love you more than she loved God, she get mad at you. She ain't listening to God. Amen. But when my wife get mad at me, she still got to listen to God. Because she loved God before she found me. And when I get mad at her, I still got to hear God. Amen. When you get married, marry somebody that love God more than they love you. Amen. Because they're going to have some trouble with you. But I ain't never had no trouble with God. Hallelujah. He always straightens me out when I get on the wrong path. When our spirit get a little sideways. Anybody ever get a little sideways sometimes? Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord will straighten you out. So you get married, marry somebody that loves God more than they love you. Because the Lord knows how to straighten them out. Amen. And when they won't hear you, they'll hear God. Oh, hallelujah. When your husband won't hear you, he'll hear God. When your wife won't hear you, she'll hear God. Make sure that ever who you marry, love God first. Amen. Oh, baby, I love you so much, I'll drink out of your shoe. That ain't going to do no good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next day he'll be hitting you with that same shoe. Praise the <laughs> Lord. Amen. Marry somebody that'll kiss Jesus' feet. That's what you want. Not somebody drink out of your shoe. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyway, we'll leave that alone. Man, I'm going to get four messages in here tonight if I can. Praise the Lord. The first king. Nineteenth chapter, First Kings nineteen, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, "So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time." And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water 
at his head, and he did eat and drink and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meal forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Father, I thank you for these scriptures. And I ask you for the utterance to speak your word on tonight, that you give us ears that hear, hearts to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. And Brother Marco, put on this tape a still, small voice. Over to the book of Proverbs. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How many has ever been in distress? Didn't know what to do. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with how much? With all thine heart, and lean not to what? In how many of your ways? All your ways do what? And he shall... The Bible says it's not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. No matter what is going on in your life, God's people, I'm not talking about the world, but God's people are supposed to have peace. No matter what your circumstance is, you are supposed to the Bible said Jesus lift up his eyes and he looked on Jerusalem and he began to weep over Jerusalem as he stood there on the mountain and cried, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often I would have gathered you together under my wing as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not if you had known if you had known, even in this thy time, he said the things that belong unto your peace. Y'all read that in the Bible. That God's people, no matter what your circumstance, you're supposed to be able to always find a place of peace, whether you're sick in your body, whether you're got troubles in your marriage, in your home, on your job, with your children, whether you got financial troubles or difficulties, we're supposed to know how to keep that peace of God. And over here in Second Chronicles, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I mean, appreciate him. I thank God for Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. When my heart is overwhelmed, oh, hallelujah, he takes me by the hand and leads me to the rock that's higher than I. How many has ever been overwhelmed? Some of y'all ain't never gone through nothing. Had Jesus pull you out of many waters, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. But God has been good to me. God has kept me, amen, when I, amen, when I would have lost my mind, when I would have lost my salvation, amen, Jesus was right there. I might say, I kept myself, I didn't keep myself, amen, God has kept me. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, 
Oh, God has been good to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah said he knows how to keep you in perfect peace. Amen. We, we, we lose our peace sometimes because of the things that we go through. But it never has been the will of God. He allows you to be tried. He allows you to suffer things. But it never is the will of God for his people to be without peace. I don't know what your situation is, but you're always supposed to be able, amen, to tap into that peace of God, amen, when things, when life is overwhelming, when it seems like trouble is all around, amen, there's something on the inside of you, amen, that's supposed to have the peace of God, that when others are pulling their hair out, you say it's going to be all right, amen, you don't need sinners to hold your hand and comfort you, amen, you're supposed to comfort them, you're supposed to let the sinner know, amen, Even even though things look dark right now, I serve a God. What did Paul tell him on that boat? He said, the God's who I am. So there's an angel that stood by me when neither sun nor stars are prayed for many days. He encouraged the sinner. Say, be of good cheer. Ain't nobody going to lose their life while I'm on this boat. Say, God is watching out for me. And while he's saving me, he's going to save y'all too. You're supposed to encourage the sinner. You ain't supposed to be leaning on their shoulder. Amen. They're supposed to lean on yours. You're the one that got the peace of God. You're the one that's got a Savior. Amen. That'll speak to you when life is trouble. And he'll bow down and whisper in your ear. Amen. While you're on your knees and let you know everything's going to be all right. You ain't got to worry about it. I got your back. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all. Amen. But God's got my back. Hallelujah, he's watching out for me. Amen, none of my steps shall slide. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him. Spoke through Isaiah, say, who are you that you should be afraid of a man that's going to die? Ain't that what he's saying? Say, you ain't got no right to be scared. Jesus put it this way, said, fear not them that can kill the body. He said, even though they may kill you, they can't take your peace. They crucified Jesus, but they didn't take his peace. They crucified Stephen, but they didn't take his peace. And here you and I can't seem to find it. Lord, help us, Jesus. Over here in 2 Chronicles. And the Spirit of God came upon 15. Thank you, Mother William. came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah, and Benjamin. The Lord is, what did he say? Gideon said, If God is with us, where are all his signs, his miracles? That God told us about. But he didn't know God was about to show up through him. Amen. I mean, God knows how to get stuff done. Gideon's looking at his circumstance. You know, he's got to hide his food to keep the Midianites from getting his food. Got to hide everything. Amen. The angel came and said, Thou mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. Gideon said, Yeah, where are you at? He ain't been around here in a whole bunch of days. I ain't seen him. Amen. What, why is all this befalling us if God is with us? God is still with us even though we're going through some things. Even though things have befallen us. Even though we can't understand sometimes why saints are sick, why saints are dying. Don't you think that don't mess with my mind too? God, what's going on? Amen. But he's still with us. As long as in my heart I'm still with him, he's still with me. Amen. If I don't forsake him, he ain't going to forsake me. When I draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to me. When I feel after him, he's found of me. Amen. God, amen, even though you can't see him, Job said, I look for him. Amen. I couldn't find him, but I know he's still looking out for me. He said, the worms destroy my flesh, yet in my flesh I shall see God. I know that my Redeemer lives. Oh, we need to wake up today. We know that God is still with us. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. 
Even when you cannot feel God, the devil wants you to cast away your confidence. But you need to know that God is a God of his word. Amen. No matter what it looks like, amen, though the sea rise up, amen, though the skies are falling around you, God is still God. So you got to tap into that. God, I realize, amen, you ain't worried about it. Why am I worried about it? You got to have peace with God. The Lord is with you while you be with him. If you do what? If you seek him. He will be found of you. Yeah, he will do. Hallelujah, Jesus. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. When they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord. Sometimes God allow things to happen to get us to pray. Amen. Everybody don't handle stuff with prayer. But you're supposed to handle every adversity with prayer. When they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And notice what kind of season they were in. This is the season we're in today. Here in 2014 even. And in those days there was no peace. Lord help us. To him that went out nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the country. This is a spirit that's got a hold of people. People are so vexed. Don't have no peace. I'm telling you, you're a child of God. It should show in your countenance. I'm looking y'all in the eye. When you got peace, it's supposed to show in your countenance. A child of God ain't got no business walking around frowning seven days a week. I said, that's just my dedication. Hey, you ain't that dedicated. You, you just vexed. You don't know how to get that devil off your back. <laughs> yeah, amen. You got to have a smile sometime. Amen. Everybody's under some kind of pressure. Amen. But the spirit of God is supposed to lift that off you. You ain't supposed to be walking around. You, you'll get heart trouble. Hey, you don't know what I'm going through. But if you only knew what I was going through, everybody going through something. Oh, you heard I'm going through more than anybody else. No, you ain't either. Everybody got more on their plate than it seems like they can handle. They may not have the same problem you got. How many of y'all got less troubles than you need right now? How many can handle a few more troubles? Can't nobody handle nothing. I mean, we all plumb full. But amen, that don't mean you ain't got no peace. That don't mean that the devil rides your back just because he's in your life, on your job, in your home, in your kidneys, in your big toe. That don't mean that you ain't got no peace. Woo! I mean, God will give you peace in your body. He'll give you peace in your blood pressure. He'll give you peace in your blood sugar. He'll give you peace in your aching back. He'll give you peace in your headache. He'll give you peace back there in your shoulders where that pain won't leave. God knows how to speak peace. I'm telling you, these vexed say, the Bible says Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were what? Oppressed of, who were they oppressed of? Of a press of the devil. It's the devil that's causing you to have a migraine seven days a week. It ain't your circumstance. You can have trouble seven days a week and still have peace. I mean, I got scripture with me. Y'all know I don't come to open door without scripture. I'm, I'm, I'm loaded for burn tonight. I got the word with me. Say amen in advance. I'll prove it to you. <laughs> God knows how to speak to us. <coughs> and God speaking ain't just in shouting. Thank God for shouting. People may think I'm against shouting. I ain't against shouting. I love shouting. But while you're shouting, God is talking to you. That Holy Ghost you feel, I like what Brother Taylor said that down there. That Holy Ghost, God ain't in there with your arms flailing, your legs going, amen. When that Holy Ghost comes on you, he's trying to minister something to you. Amen. He ain't just trying to make you shout. He's trying to speak to you. 
Amen. You got to have an ear to hear. Amen. We hear God in grand things, and thus saith the Lord, but you got to have an ear to hear that still, small voice. That still voice means it's a voice of peace. It's a voice that calms you down, that takes away all this anxiety and this pressure that you can't bear up under. You ain't got no business being in no street fight. I know what I'm going to do. I'm getting me a gun. I'm telling you, I'll take care of this. Quote scripture, too. Jesus says, sell your coat and buy a sword. I'm getting me a gun. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with having a gun, but your peace ain't in your gun. They call it a peacemaker, but it ain't a peacemaker. It's a death maker. God knows how to give you peace just by speaking to you. Well, when you pull your heart out, you get down on your knees. You don't know how to resolve this circumstance that you're in, this situation that you're in. Get on your knees and start talking to God. If you got the Holy Ghost, you already got peace. We just don't know it sometimes. I'm proving to you in Romans 14. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got peace. The Bible says they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. What does that mean? That means you're trying to find it in all the wrong stuff. Amen. You, it's good to have a good friend, but a good friend can't give you this peace I'm talking about tonight. They'll sympathize with you. Amen. They'll, they'll chew other people out with you, talk about your enemies, run them down, but that still don't give you no peace. I mean, like for your friend to run down your enemies, which, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what that's like, but I know people like that. You don't like them, I don't like them either. What they do? <laughs> you decide you don't like them before you even know what they did. That ain't God, is it? Just because one person mad at somebody, don't make me mad at them. I still love them. Still smile at them. You ain't got no business getting mad at your friend because your friend ain't mad at your enemy just because you mad at them. Amen. Your friend trying to hold their peace. They trying to love both of y'all. Amen. You want somebody to be, amen. You don't need no more. You don't need no more enemies in the kingdom of God. We're all brethren. Is that right? I ain't got no enemies in the church. I don't know who y'all been talking to. I ain't got no enemies. I love everybody. Now, everybody may not love me, but that's their business. <laughs> hey man, that's your business if you don't love me. That's between you and the Lord. That's your own headache. I say you just get on my nerves. I know I do, but that's your problem. Hey man, put your nerves up where somebody can't get on them all the time. You stop wearing your nerves out there where people can just walk all over. I learned how to tuck my nerves away. Well, anybody have to learn how to tuck your nerves away? Well, don't nobody, I mean, you can get your nerves to a place where folks don't get on them no more. And they're still doing the same thing, but all of a sudden, it don't get on your nerves no more. Look around this service sometimes. See these people that got these six kids. Kids are jumping around, screaming, jumping on the pew, and the parents, it don't even bother them. They zoned out. They don't even hear their kids no more. They haven't got immune to it. They sat around that house, them kids running around. Whoa! Parents don't even hear them no more. I mean, it just bothers you. But <laughs> parents don't, they haven't got immune to it. They can't even hear their kids. Sitting right next to them, don't even see them. It, it's eating you up, but it ain't bothering them a bit. <laughs> I mean, you can get that way about people that people don't buy. Paul said, none of these things move me. You can get to the place where people don't move you. You still love them, but they don't move you. Amen. That's just that's, that's them. I, I know I'm right with God. The Holy Ghost has convicted me about my wrong, and otherwise, I ain't worried about it. Well, you can get to the place where stuff just don't move you. God has spoke to you. Over here in Genesis. Lord, help. Did somebody move that clock up? Marco, Genesis 41. Pharaoh is troubled. It's like I was about this dream. I don't know if I'm going to tell it or not. In verse 8, he was troubled by this dream. But notice what Joseph said. Let's go down to verse 
uh, 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. They brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment. And came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered, Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh, what is he going to give him? An answer of peace. It takes the Lord to speak to your situation and speak peace in whatever situation is troubling you. God knows how to speak peace in. How many believe that? It's not in man. Joseph said, it's not in me. That, what that means, it's not in man. It's God the one. A lot of times we look to man. Amen. I say this all the time. The one that wounded you can't heal you. The one that hurt you can't heal you. Amen. It takes the Lord to bind up your broken heart. Stop looking to man to give you peace in what your situation. Man may need to apologize to you, but they can't make you whole. You know it's the truth. People apologize and still your feelings is hurt. Still your heart is broken. But Jesus said in Luke 4, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to bind up the broken heart. Ain't that what he said? Everybody get their heart broke from time to time. Everybody get disappointed in other human beings. Ain't it the truth? You ain't going to live in this life and not have other human beings break your heart from time to time. Folks lie on you, lie to you, lie about you, lie around you. Just lie, lie, lie. <laughs> Don't lie. Liar. But God is the one that heals that. I mean, God taught us through our pastor when we was young, don't try to chase down a lie. Because there'll always be somebody saying something. And you just losing your, your little bit of peace of mind you got trying to find out who said what. People always bring me stuff. So-and-so says so-and-so. Amen. I don't worry about that. You treat them the same. Amen. Treat them the same. Love them with that same love, just like they ain't said nothing. Just like they ain't lied on you. Amen. Just like they ain't backstabbers. Amen. Amen. It take, it take the peace of God to ignore that knife in somebody's hand and go ahead and hug them anyway. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My mother-in-law said some people hug you looking for a place to choke you, but you still got to hug them. Amen. If they want to hug, I don't want to hug you. I heard what you said about me. It don't matter what they say. Amen. Because some folks lie on other folks. They don't necessarily say what you, you know. Some folks put a little paprika when they tell the story over again. It ain't seasoned enough. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. They retell it. Just like when I finally heard about Brother Terrell. They say he lost a gallon of blood. Well, when we heard from Sister Terrell herself, she says half a gallon. But, you know, sometimes people got to add a little bit. You know. <laughs> I ain't saying the one I heard it from added, but somebody who told that person may add it to it. You know, and people just add stuff. If it ain't salty enough, each person adds a little bit to it. And by the time it get back to you, they might not say nothing about you except you look nice. <laughs> My wife tell this story about our daughter when she was three. I didn't really know her then. But say she got in the car with this woman. And my wife was telling this woman, Say, sister so-and-so, Monique said you look nice. She said, Ma, I said she thinks she look nice. <laughs> hey, that's a whole different story, ain't it? And in one word could just change the whole story. And that's what some people do. Hey, Amen. They add a little bit to it. Sometimes people ain't said exactly what. Yeah, we just get all crazy because what somebody told us that somebody's brother-in-law, sisters, uncles, cousins, half-brothers, niece, dog said. <laughs> Man, I, you ain't got time for all that. Trust me, you, you got enough to handle without trying to worry about some kind of hearsay, he say, she say, amen, I'm all upset. Amen, let that stuff pass. The Lord told me years ago on the fire, I was here on the fire, he said, just step aside and let it pass. That's what Paul said, give place to wrath. What it mean is, step aside and just let that junk go on past you. I ain't got nothing to do, I ain't messing with that. Some people you just can't meddle with. Paul said, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. But some people, you just got to avoid them. 
Amen. Some people, all they do is want to talk about somebody else. That they ain't going to do nothing but rob you of your peace. <laughs> Have you heard? No, I don't want to hear. <laughs> I mean, as a pastor, some things I need to know. But, you know, some people just want to run other folks down. I, I, I just ain't got time for that. I'm trying to build people up. How am I going to run them down? How am I going to, Brother Carter, run you down behind your back and then try to say amen while you preach? I'm a hypocrite. I got to try to lift you up. <laughs> we got to try to lift one another. Ain't the truth. Somebody say amen. Y'all still got peace out there? <laughs> I mean, God will give you an answer of peace. Let's go over here to Mark. I ain't going to hold y'all too much longer. How many of y'all worried about the snow? Somebody said, I didn't know snow was coming. Just to, just used to the, <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm glad to see you. I didn't think you was coming. Sister Hunt don't mess with no snow. Sister Hunt and Sister Hunter. She's supposed to be preaching, but she said, if it's snow, I ain't coming. Sister Hunter is saying <laughs> I said, I can't blame her. Somebody yelled out in the audience, press your way. That's easy enough for you to say. I don't tell people to drive when they ain't comfortable. You ain't comfortable, stay at home. This is the test. <laughs> I'm going to help y'all out here. If you down to a can of beans and a can of asparagus, and you would rather eat that than go out to the store and buy food, that's the same kind of weather you stay home from church in. But if you're down to a can of beans and a can of asparagus and you would drive to Walmart to get some more food, then you can come to church in that same weather. Well, that's how you judge whether you should come to church or not. <laughs> look at Sister Sheila. Why are you looking at me like that? Sister? <laughs> hey, y'all should be standing up here. <laughs> write, write that down. <laughs> Sister Sheila said, I ain't going nowhere in no snow. <laughs> Amen. But if you know you wouldn't drive to go get some more beans or go get you some hamburger, amen, then it's all right to stay at home. You're just scared to drive. Some people just scared to drive. It? And I don't blame you on these curves. I tell you, the older I get, the more a little scared I get. Y'all know how it was when we were young, man. I was in my 20s. They told me at the state, it's dropping ice out there, Mike. Stay here. We'll make you a bed. I said, nothing doing. I had to pull over, but caught about every 15 minutes and scrape the ice. It was coming down so hard, the ice, not snow, ice. I couldn't even drive. The windshield wipe, I'd pull over and scrape it off. Every, it took me about two or three hours to get home from Formby, but I got home. If that happened today, I'd be in the hotel. <laughs> I said, what about the Lord giving you peace? What about the Lord giving you wisdom? When I was young, I was stupid, but I ain't stupid no more. Now, if y'all can do it, y'all do it. Over here to Mark 4. I guess I can't hold y'all too much longer. But everything you need, I find it in the word of God. Verse 35, in the same day when it was even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over. To the other side, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. There was also there with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Didn't worry him, did it? Didn't even wake him up. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, curse thou not that we perish. He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. I mean, whenever the Lord speaks to you, it brings peace. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. And I want to go over here to John 14. If we will learn how to be still. God knows how to keep us. Man, I don't know what Sister Jones was going through. I'm telling you, some of y'all about to have a nervous breakdown. I mean, we need the Lord ministering to us. You don't need no pills. I'm telling you, you don't need no pills. 
Ain't no, ain't no saint of God suffering from Xanax deficiency. Uh, what's this other one? Prozac. You don't have to have no Prozac. Jesus is your Prozac. We all felt like we depressed. How many of you ever felt like you depressed? <laughs> that the devil come whispers to you and say, you going through depression. <laughs> I think, man, I heard that voice. Hey, Amen. I know I get rid of depression. I tell you what, I ain't need to go lay on no sinner's couch and tell him my troubles. Now, if y'all want to do that, that's, that's fine. But they're going to they gonna charge you. going to lay on that couch for five years. You're going to be like the one with the issue of blood. Nothing better, but rather grew worse. But when Jesus speak peace to you, hey, amen, you ain't in no depression no more. Saved people don't get a spirit of grief. You may get a spirit of mully grub. You may get a spirit of feeling sorry for yourself. And God, look, look at Elijah. He don't want Jezebel killing him, but he said, God, it's enough. Just let me die. Ain't that what he said? You know, I don't know if he was depressed or what, but God said God spoke to him, and that word brings peace. I don't care what you're going through. You may feel like you want to die or kill yourself. You don't need to kill yourself. There's a God that will give you an answer of peace. He'll speak to you. If you get still, if you get quiet, if you put down your Nintendo and your Nintendo and your Xbox and your YouTube and your television remote and get in prayer and get still sometimes. I'm going to tell you something. You ain't always got to have words to say. Yeah, sometimes you get in prayer and say, God, I don't know what to say. I just know I'm overwhelmed. I know my mind can't even settle down. I'm trying to pray right here, but I'm thinking about all these things. I'm vexed. I'm angry. I'm mad at the wife. I'm mad at the husband. I'm mad at the children. I'm mad at the job. Whatever's going to talk to him about it and then spend some time being still. Get that Bible out. Somebody say, I can't read. Yeah, you can. You can read your Bible while you but get that Bible out. Go to Psalms and start reading for a while. And just be still. People don't know how to be quiet. They got to always be plugged into something. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, you can plug into Jesus and he'll give you peace. Hey Amen. That passes all understanding. You ain't always got to be plugged in to some carnal thing. That's a lot of time why we ain't got no peace. We letting the devil minister to us all hours of the day and night. Hey Amen. YouTube and texting and tweeting and Facebooking. You need to get a hold of the Lord. Amen. Shante, you remember you sent me that video? Keep your business off of Facebook. Keep your business off of Facebook. Well, <laughs> sometimes you act like a saint, but your Facebook page say you ain't. You ought to keep your business off of. I don't understand <laughs> I don't know what kind of world this is, man. Folks get mad at something they read on the computer screen. And I'm tweeting, Mother William said, Brother Carter's head is bald, sin. <laughs> Next thing I know, Brother Carter, I'm up here trying to preach. Mother William, Brother Carter going at it. Hey, man, I don't know what kind of spirit is up here. I don't know, all because of the... Man, it's the stupidest thing. <laughs> get, get somewhere and get a hold of the Lord. And God knows how to settle all your storms. Don't only do it. Over here in John 14. Verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you. God the only thing he needs in order to bring peace is his voice. That's just something about his voice. I mean, when you hear it, no matter what circumstance you is, when you hear that voice of God, everything calms down in your spirit. Won't it do it? These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the comfort of anybody got the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things. This is what the Holy Ghost is for. The Holy Ghost is designed to quicken the word of God to you. That's what it's for. It always digs in there. When you need a scripture, the Holy Ghost is in there, man, digging through that big old box, digging through that big, and find exactly what you need and bring it up in your spirit. Won't he do it? Something you hadn't thought about, something you hadn't read in three years, the Holy Ghost will bring it up. 
And man, all of a sudden, something inside you calm right on down. Start putting all the knives back in the drawer. Husband can sleep with both eyes closed now. Praise the Lord for the Holy Ghost. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. What is the world's peace? The world has peace when everything is going their way. You have peace even though everything is contrary. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not do not allow. What does this last clause tell you? It tells you it is in your control. Do not allow. Let not your heart be troubled. Y'all reading the same Bible I'm reading? Neither let it be afraid. Skip all the way down here. I mean, over to verse, chapter 16 is what I want. These things, verse 33. I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. How did he go do it? By speaking to us. In the world you shall have tribulation. Ain't got nothing to do with your peace. But be of good cheer. Why? I have done what? Overcome the world. Anything that keeps you upset and tore up, you hadn't overcome it yet. Let's go over here to Romans. I'm going to close with this, I believe. No, I ain't. I'm going to close with Isaiah. But I want to read this Romans. Everybody got the Holy Ghost. Got peace. I don't care what the situation looks like. It's in there. You just got to tap into it. Get still somewhere. Somebody read for me real quick. Oh, Lord. I wanted to read that Psalms. For, don't read that real quick. I got to read Psalms 46. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness. And what else is it? Peace. Y'all being quiet ain't going to make me stop. What else is it? It's peace. <laughs> so I say, be very, very quiet. <laughs> I got peace tonight, so it don't matter. <laughs> Righteousness and it's peace. Somebody say peace. And joy, what is it in? It's in the Holy Ghost. Everybody got the Holy Ghost, got living right, got joy, and you got peace when you got the Holy Ghost. Didn't you get it? Yeah, you did. I don't care what you say. You got it if you got the Holy Ghost. Psalm. <coughs> I got peace in my body. The devil is a lie. I ain't sick. I ain't getting sick. My wife said somebody came. I guess I was going to St. Louis. Somebody came to the house to check on and said they stood at the door and didn't come in. <laughs> I don't know what they bring, but I can just see them said, here. <laughs> Man, this is wicked. I've had flu before, but this, is a, this was some wicked stuff. I tell you, I don't know what kind of flu they got in Texas. But I tell you what, next time I go, I'll be ready for them. This Texas flu is <laughs> something else. <coughs> Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. What kind of help is he in trouble? Not just present, very present. Very present means he's not just with you, he's in you. That's very present. That's more than just present. He's very present. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed, Though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river. That's the Holy Ghost, ain't it? The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place for the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The heathen raised, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is, where is he? With us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Shalom, come, 
Behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease. That's peace, isn't it? Unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be, what did he say? Be still, be at peace, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And then Isaiah 26. I'm closing. God will speak to you a still, small voice. A voice of peace. Isaiah 26 and 3. Some of you might have been wondering where this scripture is. Here it is. Thou wilt keep him in what kind of peace? perfect peace whose mind is what stay will not be moved on thee because he trusted in thee give the Lord a hand clap for the word of God on tonight father we thank you for these scriptures I thank you for allowing me these last 33 years in the time of my greatest need to hear that still small voice, that voice of peace. God in the midst of shoutings, in the midst of strong words, and hard words, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of desolations, in the midst of great vexations. God, I've heard that voice in one form or another, one scripture or another. You were able to speak to me, Lord, and I know you've spoken to these here. We'll continue to do so. Give us an answer of peace, Lord, all those that are troubled. Paul wrote to him and said, ye that are troubled, rest with us. God, we pray, Lord, that your peace would settle on all your people, Lord, that you would cause us, Lord, to find that peace in you, to find that place of stillness and that place of rest to run into that name of the Lord as a refuge and to be saved. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this word and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have an offering, we're going to ask you to come and give. Oh, when trouble come, storm begin to rise. Hold all and learn to. Oh, keep on praying. Keep on believing, hold on and learn to.